Hey guys, welcome back to the course FA Analysis using SOLIDWORKS. I hope all of you are doing good. In this video, I will be running a simple buckling analysis on a bracket. Then I will be adding a stiffener to the bracket and show you how to increase the buckling factor of safety for a model. So this example will be especially helpful to attempt the buckling analysis challenge. So towards the end of the video, I'll just give you a brief introduction as to what you are expected to do in the buckling analysis challenge. So let's just get started. So this is the bracket. I've already opened that in SOLIDWORKS. And what I will be doing is I will be applying a load of 2000 Newton or 2 kilo Newton on top in this phase. And the rest of the bottom faces, these four faces will be fixed. So I'll first I'll go into SOLIDWORKS add-ins and grab our SOLIDWORKS simulation license. Let's click it to activate it. So we have our license here. Once we have the simulation license activated, let me quickly go and click it. Now I'll press new study. This will give us all the simulation that we can do on SOLIDWORKS. I'll just rename this as frame buckling, select buckling module, and then the green tick. This is done. I'll just do the usual. Uh, so let's assign a material for it. I'll just give cast alloy steel. Once that is done, let's go define the fixtures for this one. The bottom portion. Let's go select these ones. Uh, make sure that you don't mess up the selections because if you, if there's a huge difference between selecting a face and then selecting an edge. Since we're selecting only the faces, we need to make sure that we've selected only the faces. Control 7. Isometric view, external load will give force 2 kilo Newton, that is 2000 Newtons on this face and the green tick. And another important one is meshing. Um, so, what I'll be doing is I'll set a mesh control for this single piece alone because this is where majority of the buckling is going to occur. So I'll set a 1.5 into 1.5, 1.5 millimeter mesh for the selected faces. And then we'll give a normal mesh for the rest of them. Then let's just create mesh, the green tick. So we have our meshed model. As I just said, here you can see that the mesh is much more finer than the mesh in these areas. Just press Control 7 and let's run the simulation. And we have the results here. You can see that the Buckling factor of safety at this instant for this model when 2000 newtons of force is applied on this phase it is 13.89. So how do we increase the buckling factor of safety without really changing the dimension or the material that we use? One method to do that is by adding stiffness and that's exactly what we will be doing right now. Our target here is to get a buckling factor of safety of around 20. So our stiffener, let's just make a stiffener first and see how much load factor it's going to give us. And then we can alter the stiffener, the location, the dimensions of the stiffener, and then obtain our required load factor. Okay, for the sake of saving time, I've already made the stiffness here and I'm just showing it directly to you. So if you're thinking, oh, how is this so difficult? No, it's really not that difficult. So what I did here was I just went into the front plane and created this sketch okay and then extruded it from mid plane so that this body will join with this body okay it's very simple not not much of an issue so what we will be doing here this one will have stiffness and the other one which we already ran we did not have any stiffness so let's go into solidworks add-ins and let's press solidworks simulation and grab our license Now 
once we have our license i'll just press simulation new study buckling with stefna that will be our name select buckling and press the green tick once we are in the simulation interface i'll just go and give my favorite material here as cast alloy steel since we already gave cast alloy steel it is important that we also give cast alloy steel here also and the fixtures fixed geometry select all the bottom faces and green tick control 7 external loads uh, i'll ensure that i give the same amount of load as the previous example so it is 2000 kN sorry 2000 newtons so it will be 2 kN so 2000 newtons and i'll just run a normal mesh we can give mesh and run so that we don't again need to press the run the study option again okay so if you can see that the simulation has run and there is one difference that you must have noticed the load factor for this model with stiffener has almost increased by a value of 1.5 so before it was around 14.2 now it is around 15.7 so that means by simply adding one small part here we were able to increase the load factor by a margin of 1.5 so what we will be doing right now is we will be further trying to increase the load factor we'll keep our target as 20 okay so how will i do that i'll just go to evaluate and use the design study here let's set the variables add parameter uh, so before i move on to variables it is important that you know that uh, the only parameter which we will be changing are the is the location of the stiffener nothing else okay so the two parameters which define the stiffener are this one this is the vertical length vertical position the next one is the horizontal position so it's somewhat hidden here i'll just press it 10 and i'll mark it as horizontal and i'll just press ok Here, I'll increase the maximum to 25, the same here also, so it will give us much more play here, and the minimum is 5, and the step let it be a 7. So the next one is the buckling factor of safety, let's go and grab it from the simulation. Uh, since our target here is 20, we will be setting the minimum constraint as 20, um, so let's go into constraints and select add sensor don't worry about those many buckling factors of safety so what i did was i just imported this model from the previous main one so all the constraints whichever we set there also came in here so that's not going to be an issue here so mass properties we'll go to simulation data here select buckling factor of safety once we've selected that press the green tick and here we need to change the constraint as 20 since our target here is 20 we're adding it as 20 and instead of less than it will be greater than oh it's, it changed here also again we'll change it to 20 and the goals the same condition since the model is imported all the values have come here instead of mass properties simulation data buckling factor of safety and the green tick our goal is to maximize it and now that we have everything that is required so the total number of active scenarios here is 25 it will run the simulation and check all the values 25 times based on the constraints and the goal only the only variables here will be the position of the stiffener so i'll just give run and we'll just wait for it all right so you can see that the solver has finished the design study and we have obtained this is the optimal value you can also notice that there are many more values which are more than 21 so there is a scenario 4 scenario 10 scenario 15 and scenario 5 but among these four 
acceptable scenarios only scenario 5 is is given to us as optimal condition so the main reason behind this is because in our goals we set the ba buckling factor of safety as maximized so that means that even if we get let's say thousands of values the optimal value will be the one which is maximum so this will be the end of this uh, simulation we've achieved our goal right now so this is a good example to show you how a simple change in the design increase the factor of safety of your models so for your challenge you will be given the model of the cyclonic separator which i simulated in the previous video uh, let me just quickly open that so this is the cyclonic separator which you will be given the challenge here is that you should increase the buckling factor of safety of your stand uh, much similar to the simulation which i did uh, but the condition here is that you should not change the material you should not change the dimension of your stand and you should stick to the force values that we have given so how do you do it uh, let me just quickly go to isometric view so the first thing that you will be required to do is uh, remove these three and make a separate model of it so how you can do that is selecting these three models the middle cyclonic separators control right and you can suppress this model once you suppress this you can actually save this as a separate part file go to file save as and you can select it wherever you want and one important thing is this part and you can save it wherever you want i've already made a simple part file so i'm not going to be saving it again so i'll just hit cancel and let me go grab that part file here is our part file so to obtain at our buckling factor of safety so what you will be doing is initially you will be applying a certain value of force here directed downwards that will cause buckling on these four legs of the model and you will be given a certain buckling factor of safety and also you will be receiving a target so si similar to how 20 was our target the target for this will be available for you in the question and your goal would be to create a stiffener in such a way that you will be increasing the buckling factor of safety of this model so how you will be doing is let's just go to sketch and select sketch and draw the profile of the stiffener whichever you have in your mind in this uh, sketch view and then offset it and then extrude it we will also be given the extrude thickness of your sketch this is to ensure that no abnormally big stiffness are made which are just not practical and that's it so once you create your stiffener uh, apply loads from the top part notice how much buckling factor of safety you're getting and then go to evaluate and run a design study on this so similar to how i did it in the uh, previous example uh, just create your stiffener and uh, run a design study based on the position of your stiffener you will get different buckling factors of safety for different positions of the stiffener find the most optimal position and submit it well that's it for this video i hope you all have a proper understanding of what is expected from the challenge uh, well that's it for this video i'll meet you again in the next one bye